All right, I have talked for far too long. Let's just go into it, create something so you can work with it because the more you work with it, the more you create, the more you experiment, the better it will stick in your brain. And I could go into every little detail, but over time, little by little, I will just drop some hints here and there on what something means. And for now, let's go to Polyhaven and click on there, and then you will drop on this menu. It might be slightly different once you visit it. But what we are going to do is control and then open this. It's just a shortcut to open this in a new link and a new tab. And let's open the textures too and the models. So what you can get here is free props. You can either support them by buying their add-on or by donating. And here under the models, we won't download anything yet. It will come later in another tutorial. Here you have different kind of models you can download and just import into your scene without you having to do it. But that's not why we're here. We are just going to download something really basic. It's called an HDR or HDRI. And let's click on all. And what you have here is, this is early access there. You have to pay for it. Let's go to outdoor, for example. Let's go to skies. And let's choose maybe, where's night? There is night, okay. Because I want to go for a nighttime scene room. We're just going to choose anything. You can choose whatever you like. Basically what this is doing is it's taking a blender environment and surrounding it with this image and shining the light from this image onto your scene like the environment would. Like the sky is shining and it's bouncing around everywhere and the different colors interact with each other. So let's click on that. 4K is too much. Let's just go with 1K. We just want really simple. We're just going to download that one and save it somewhere, you know, where you can find it again. Let's go to the texture. What do you have in a texture? Since we're going to create just a, just a simple scene with a room. We just need a brick wall to have the walls. You can choose anything you want. In the end, it doesn't really matter. I want to go for, let's go with this, for example, 1K and just download that one. I will also link everything down below in the comments if you want to follow the same textures one by one. What else does a room need? Let's just think, okay, you need a brick wall. What do we want? We need a floor too, right? So for the floor, we need wood. Oh, you don't need wood, but you know, it looks cool. It depends all on your taste. You can choose whatever you want. I kind of like the darkish wood right here. Again, 1K, download this one. We will use all of them later on. And then you can just go over it and see what else they have. They have something for terrain but we're going to do an indoor scene, so we don't need that. Uh, what else? They have frogs. We don't need that either. A roof. We could put a roof in our scene, but not necessary. We can also look for a metal. Let's make a candle holder and make the candle holder a metal material. Um, we don't want anything rusty. Let's go with green metal rust. No. And that's it, like basically we're done. If you want to download more, you can always come back. If you want to create fabrics, you can download some textures here. So we got all three of our downloads. Let's go back into Blender with a fresh scene. Let's look at it. Everything's there, the camera, the default cube and the lighting. Let's just delete, select the light and delete it. Let me activate the cast keys so you can see what I'm pressing in the bottom left. If you want to go into the camera view, press zero on the numpad. It's also written numpad zero. And select the camera button down here and let's switch the perspective to orthographic. 
what this is basically doing is eliminating all the perspective distortions. So it's just looking like it's on one even plane. Okay, that's the basis for that. And for the world environment, the one we just downloaded, the one with the night sky, you know. For that, we're going to click over on the world tab here, then go over to the color and click on this yellow button right there and click on environment texture. Then it will prompt you to either create a new one or you can open one. If you create a new one, for example, let's make this blue and press OK. There's something called the rendered view. Right now we are in solid view. If you press Z, you can see all those views. We are in solid view. If you go into rendered view, you will see <laughs> everything is blue. Like the whole surrounding of the world is blue. We don't want that. So let's go back, click the X and everything that is not textured or the data is missing, it's going to show purple like this. So right now we don't have anything selected. Now you click on open, find the texture you just had and import it. Okay. And since we just downloaded a 1K image file, it's all looking blurry and not really that nice. But we just want some lights coming from different directions to make it more natural. Now that we have this, we're done with the world tab. You can just forget about it. Or if you want to increase the strength, you can do this right here. Let's put it to 10, but that's unnecessary. Let's just leave it for one. Let's keep everything simple for now. What we want to do is create a simple room from the camera perspective. We're going to cut three of the walls and look into the room. To do that, you just select the cube, go into edit mode by pressing tab. In edit mode, you press one to go into vertex select mode. You remember two and you can select edges, three, you can select faces. And with one, you're going to select the vertex. Press X to delete a vertex edge or a face. And you can see that. To dissolve the vertices, edges and faces, we don't need that right now. But let me just show you. If we dissolve it, it's just going to stick everything weirdly together. But that we only need to delete the vertex right now. So we are deleting this point. What happens is basically, let me get this tool here. We had this dot around there, right? So we had a vertex here connecting to this vertex and we had this vertex at the bottom connecting upwards. Whenever two vertices connect, we have an edge. And whenever we have at least three vertices, like uh, doing a triangle, you have a face that you can select. And we have four vertices, so we had a face right here. Let me delete everything. And since we deleted one, one vertex, it deleted the edges thereby deleting the faces and therefore we got rid of all the three faces we had here. And right now it is thin as paper and even thinner because it has no depth at all. That's where we will use what's called a modifier. You don't need to do this, what I'm doing right now. I'm going to copy this with Shift D and move it to the side. I'm going to show you why. The right one, I'm going to apply the modifier. Click on the wrench down here and then add modifier under generate, go to solidify. This might look different for you since 4.0, Blender 4.0, the system is more organized, but you will find solidify under the generate tab anyway. Now, what did it do? As you can see, we have some thickness here. We can increase it here or decrease it wherever we want. What it's basically doing is taking the plane and adding some depth to it, solidifying. And why do we have the even thickness down here? Let's just exaggerate and go all the way up there. You see it's all moving around jagged and I forgot we can also go back to solid view. And with even thickness, it doesn't really do this distortion thingy. So we're going to turn it on, go with a thickness of 0.045. You don't need to copy it exactly. And the rest of the settings, we don't care about them for now. 
the day might come you will need them, but you will learn about that later. So why do we use a modifier? It's called a non-destructive workflow. So we're going to change the geometry or the shape of the, the cube, non-destructively meaning if we press the screen button right here, you can see we either see the thickness of the cube or not. And let's just leave this on. And why did I make a copy on the other side? Let's just go into edit mode. Oh, I'm going to do it right now. You don't need to follow this step. I'm going to select everything, control E and extrude faces along normals. And what are normals? Just quick, you have a surface and you have a 90 degree angle. And this is always the normal, that one that sticks out. So if I have this face right here, the normal points in your direction, this normal points to my right or your left, and then this one points down, and it's always sticking on top of the face. So if I open this book cover, the normals are changing the direction. So this is basically what normal means. And let's extrude uh, the faces along the normals. And as you can see, we have the uneven thickness as we had before with the modifier. Let's just go down there. Um, okay, that's it. What we just did is we destroyed the original geometry. If we want to do something with the original base shape we had here, we have it. It is still stored. We can go back and forth and change stuff as we want. Let's say we are inserting this face, extruding it up. It might look awful once we turn on the modifier. Let's say you want this shape. And let's do the same thing here. Extrude it upwards. Let's say you want to go back to the original version. Here with the modifier, you can go back and have the thickness right there. With, of course, the extruded materials there. But if you want to go back with the destructive method, like there's almost no way you can do it exactly as it was before. You have to move this down and you have to bring the thickness down from all the walls. So basically that's why we are using the non-destructive workflow. Let's just go all the way back. There we go. And that's what modifiers are basically for. You have a bunch of modifiers. You will learn about them bit by bit. There are a bunch, but you generally use three to four and the rest are just fancy stuff you need once in a while. And if you go into edit mode, let me just show you real quick. Let's go into vertex mode. You have one, two, three, four on this side. And if we apply this modifier, which we can, and applying means we are destroying the geometry, and we cannot go back to what we had originally. If we go now to edit mode, you will see that we have vertex here now too. Before we couldn't see that. But now since we destroyed the geometry on a destroyed applied uh, modifier, we can select and use those. There are different settings you can change, but since I also want to edit some of the parts on the room, I'm just going to apply, not, no, wait. There are also different methods where you can cut out parts of the mesh. For example, let's copy this again. I'm going to show you just quick. Don't need to do this again. Um, with the copy, I'm going to apply this modifier. And let's say we want to put a window right here. How do we do that? We can go into edit mode and try to select both faces. What you could do is insert both faces, right click and then bridge faces. And there you would have one of those windows, for example. It's a bit huge, but that's one way. Another way you could do this is you can take another box, another cube, scale it down in edit mode, move it around, select your object where you want the window to be, go to the modifier tab, generate and boolean. What this is basically doing is you can take this drop tool right here, select your cube down there, and as you can see, we get an outline here. What this is doing is it's taking the object that you selected and cutting it out 
from the original object where you set the modifier to. You can also do a union, so this part of the mesh or the box will be part of the other mesh. You can do an intersect, so only the part that are intersecting will be the mesh that will be left, so the window basically, but we want difference. Let's just apply this modifier and now you can move this box. By the way, once you have the modifier activated, you can move the cube around any way you want. As long as it touches the mesh, of course. So we can apply this, delete the cube, and there you also have a window. What this is doing is destroying the geometry. As you can see, it's getting these ugly lines here. Try to avoid booleans. They're helpful. They're good. But in my experience, you have a mess cleaning up the, the mesh afterwards. These are two ways. What we can do now here with our original object, let's deactivate the modifier. And do we want it to be real world scale? So let's say we want to have a real scale. I'm just going to import another cube, move it to the side. If you press N and go to item, you will see all the dimensions. So our cube is right now two meter high. Let's make it 1.80 and bring this down, I don't know, to around there. Let's say this is our reference person. This is a human. So compared to the human, how big should the room be? How tall is a room generally? 250, three. 3 meter, or maybe taller, depends on where you are, maybe you want to have a loft. Let's go into edit mode, press A to select everything, and then press S and scale it up. And compared to your, your guy in the room, let's say our room should be this high. So this is our human, this is our room, and let's just give it also a name. Press F2, human, and then select the cube, press F2, room, okay. And now we know what is what. And to create a window, are we on the same height? Not really, let's go around there. Let's say you want a window on this side of the wall. You can select, go into edit mode first, press three to go into face select mode, and then we press I to inset the face and let's have a window around this size. And now you can move it up and down by pressing G and then Z. Moving it up and down, let's say we want a window around this height, press X and then delete this face. Now we can activate the modifier again and we have a window with a thickness. Okay. So what we have now is a room with a window and we already have a reference. We can also move the camera back and forth or we can also change the, let me see what it's called, ah, the scale, basic. So let's change the orthographic scale, move the camera a little bit up, tilt it upwards and basically fitting our scene in there. Okay. That's how we will look at our room later on. I think that's it for now, just to give you a little idea what we will be doing. It's just me from the future. This is what you will be doing in the next couple of tutorials. But I forgot to mention something really important is to save stuff. Go on the file and then press save or you press control S to save. And then you find a location wherever you want to save it, rename it and then you hit save.